What's up everybody, Alex here and welcome to this Dota Underlords tier list for August 2020. People have been asking me to do a tier list for the longest time and I finally said, you know what, let's do it. I've been hesitant because this is like the most subjective content you could possibly ask for. This is one guy's opinion on the relative strength of individual heroes in Dota Underlords. And there's a lot of things that have to be considered here, right? First of all, how does the hero stand on its own? How does the hero stand amongst its alliance? How does the alliance stand as a whole? And, uh, you know, what is the, the rarity of each individual hero? What is the cost of each individual hero? But generally speaking, what I tried to do here in developing this tier list was to essentially kind of evaluate each hero for its merits and kind of say, you know, which of these heroes kind of has the greatest impact on the board, on the game? Which are the heroes that you're really seeking, whether or not, whether it be, you know, a Warlock at three stars, or just splashing in a Disruptor to disrupt, uh, you know, Majors or, or Spirits, right? Heroes that can have extremely large impacts on the game. So, at, uh, at tier S, basically we're starting with Doom, and oh, the way I should say it, so you have, uh, you have the multiple tiers here, tier S being the highest, then stepping down to tier D being the weakest, and then within the tiers, I tried to rank them as best I could from strongest to weakest, in that tier, right? So basically in the S tier, Templar Assassin is better than Tidehunter in my opinion, however in a different class of its own, but I do believe that Luna is better than Templar Assassin for instance, and Disruptor being better than Luna. Of course, if you're running Knights, you want Luna, not Disruptor all the time, but hear me out. Okay, so basically, I st I, uh, currently I believe that the strongest unit of the game is Doom. Doom is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, with regards to his uh, latest buff, you have armor, you have attack rate. Doom itself can win fights. If you cast Doom on my second strongest hero, uh, Lone Druid, you're in a position where you probably end up winning. Because Lone Druid isn't able to get those Spirit Bears out. What's interesting though is if you have, uh, you know, certain items really activate some of these heroes as well. Like Lone Druid, for instance, is super strong with a Refresher Orb. Definitely belongs in the top uh, S tier there. And mages are nothing without Keeper of the Light. Absolutely nothing. In fact, Keeper of the Light can be so strong, I'll throw them in there in random builds if I have space for them. I just put them on the board. You've seen me do it. And you know what's crazy? He still does an incredible amount of DPS. Now, what might be, what might surprise some people is Warlock. Now, Warlock, tier S, really, Alex? He's a tier 1 unit? I know, but Warlock in and of himself completely creates a whole new archetype to build in Demons. Very few, if any, heroes can say that. That the very existence of them at 3 stars creates an entire archetype. And so that's why he's a tier S at 3 stars. If he's not at 3 stars, he's like somewhere here. <laughs> but realistically, think about the way you use Warlock. You use him in Bloodbound builds, you use him as a Sacrificial Lamb, you use him in Warlock builds, uh, you know, as ironically his name is Warlock, but I used him very recently as a tank, and he cast, uh, you know, he kept healing himself so rapidly, he was an amazing tank, he just didn't die, he didn't die. One of the few heroes with zero, ar uh, zero armor, but he has quite a few hit points. So, uh, Warlock is a very interesting add, of course Disruptor, as I mentioned, can single-handedly take down a mage or spirit stack. Uh, Luna, Luna's fantastic. Eclipse has been nerfed. Eclipse isn't as good as you'd think, but you know, a two or three star Luna with a Mask of Madness will lead you in DPSs in almost all compositions. Uh, you know, it's absolutely fantastic. And again, TA. TA is kind of the sleep hit of the S tier. Um, if you don't play Assassins, which the vast majority of you guys don't, even though I keep telling you to, if you don't play Assassins, you often don't realize that Templar Assassin is one of those units, much like Storm Spirit, that is like the last unit to die on the board. They are just so survivable. And the way it works is that you'll often find yourself with a TA in a losing fight, taking down two, one or two extra units at the end of the battle to reduce the amount of incoming damage by like three or four. TA is an absolute godsend sometimes and can be the difference between a fourth place finish and a, you know, a second or a third. So TA, absolutely fantastic, especially in Assassin build. And you also have to keep in mind, Assassin Void, Void is super, super incredible. Now, going, so those are my, uh, my tier S. These are the heroes that realistically, like, you can almost put them in into any lineup. You can splash Doom, you can splash these guys in any, any lineup. Maybe TA you don't splash in any lineup, but you can put Luna into literally almost anything. You could be running Brawnies and just throw a Luna in there for no reason. Like, <laughs> she'll just do work for you. It's crazy. Tier A. We're starting with Tidehunter. Tidehunter was very close to getting into tier S. Tidehunter is so damn good, with Ravage being what it is. Uh, he has incredible armor, kind of a, uh, incredible hit points. He does magic-based damage with Ravage, which really helps him with mages. Um, he's just an overall damn good unit. Then you got Axe, same as uh, same as uh, you know Tidehunter. Axe is one of those units as well, as so you can kind of throw into many builds. You know, he's so tanky. Culling Blade's a fantastic skill. Just a great unit to have in there. Might surprise you, Bloodseeker. Why would I pick Bloodseeker there? Bloodseeker, really, Alex? Tier A? A tier 1 unit that most people just get rid of by, you know, round 18, 20? Yes. 
The reason why is because Bloodseeker can single-handedly slide you through the early and mid-game. If you get an early two-star Bloodseeker, even if you have no intention of keeping him through the entire game, you can run Bloodseeker until you just don't need him anymore. Just run him at two stars, give him a Chrysalis, give him a Pike, whatever. Let him literally just take units down. And then what ends up happening is it kind of fills out your early and mid game. He might individually save you 20 hit points over the course of a game because of his early game impact. He's an absolute wrecking force in the early game. He's worth it. If you get him to three stars and you keep him with like a Stormhall Cloak or a BKB or something like that, he's not bad. He can still do work in the late game. Uh, he can be very game breaking, but uh, overall he tends to get a little deleted. But anyways... Long story short, Bloodseeker, I put him on the A-list there because of his ability to quite simply carry you through the early and mid-game and literally save you like 20 to 30 HP because of how well he can carry you through that early game. Tree and Protector might surprise some. Tree and Protector, fantastic job. Uh, easy to get him to three stars with the uh, the Druid benefit. And quite frankly, that additional armor, Leech Seed does a tremendous amount of healing and damage. People are often really surprised to see how many kills Tree and Protector has because of the Leech Seed. Next time you're playing, take a look. You'll often be surprised by how many killing blows he has, and it's almost never from his auto attack, which is one of the slowest in the game. And of course, Medusa. Stone Gaze being what it is, the idea that you can put a Scatty on her split shot, Cadence Blade on her split shot, she's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, her... The scaled part of her holds her back a little bit because you don't often have a good combination with her if you're running Hunters into scaled. You know, Tide Hunter's different because you might have a Slark, uh, sorry, a Slardar or something like that. Uh, but uh, Medusa, the scaled, kind of holds her back a little bit. Life Stealer's fantastic. Mas Mask of Madness Life Stealer, one of the most terrifying sites in the game. Definitely deserving of a uh, tier. Can single handedly counter br uh, Brawnies. You've seen it before. Storm Spirit. I almost, almost thought about putting him in S tier simply because he activates spirits in a way that would be impossible without the other spirits. He does what Void, Ember, and Earth cannot do, and that's repeatedly stack um, Delta Slams, and that what's, that's what puts him in a different category compared to the others. But overall, Storm Spirit, pretty damn good, not bad. Uh, excellent unit, does a lot of damage, uh, can 3-star him in Mage Comps, uh, run multiple 2-stars in Spirit Comps, fantastic unit. Shadow Fiend, incredible amount of DPS, you put a little Fedora on him, spreads the Brute bonus so fast, very high attack speed, when combined with the uh, the Demon bonus with the 3-star Warlock, you end up with an absolutely terrifying DPS machine. He's a very fast attack de uh, attacking demon, very, very underutilized in the current meta, and a good 3-star effect, even though it's very hard to 3-star Shadow Fiend in, uh, in Standard. Moran is unbelievable. Her, uh, you know, her stun is incredible. Sacred Arrow just completely locks down units for multiple seconds. She has an incredible amount of DPS. Uh, good, ironically, a good unit with like Yule, Yule Scepter, stuff like that. Very survivable. Much like TA, she might be the last one to go down. TA and Storm Spirit and Marana, they're so mobile that they're able to take, uh, you know, kind of be the last one fighting and help you finish a fight. Excellent bait for someone like, uh, like a Pudge. Necrophos, healing machine. Uh, good, very, very, very good... Um, uh, kind of synergy and alliances you know you got healer you got uh, you got uh, warlock and you have heartless you like to see that he's just an overall fantastic unit uh and uh, witch doctor and shadow shaman now they're kind of here on the merits of trolls being what they are trolls are absolutely fantastic right now i do like uh witch doctor more than shadow shaman but they're both excellent for different reasons if you're seeing blood seekers the added summons really slows him down with the shadow shaman not to mention the the hex at the end of a uh, three-star shadow shaman is truly remarkable paralyzing cask Absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, the stuns can be so devastating to like snap fires and channeled abilities. They can completely lock down uh, uh, opposing teams, especially in the early game. Absolutely fantastic ability. And probably the Black Knight of this uh, of this uh, list is Terrorblade. Terrorblade's a damn good unit. People don't use them. And it's funny because I've been guilty of this too. You know, you're going hunters and you have Terrorblade. You know, throw Terrorblade in there. And for some reason, you end up passing on him because you're you're leveling through tier three to get to uh, the Marana at four and the Medusa at five. And for some reason, you never find a way to get Terrorblade in there. I'm I'm guilty of it, but he's damn good. Uh, a two and three star Terrorblade will easily lead your team in DPS, easily lead your team in kills, and it's remarkable that uh, you know you don't usually see him. And in fact, you rarely see him in the demon builds too because you roll so hard it at the three four turn, and then when you finally start seeing Terrorblade, you're leveling so aggressively just to get demons on the board that you don't really have a chance to level him. Totally underutilized unit. Probably the, he's probably the most underrated unit in the game right now. Terrorblade. Talking about B tier now. Uh, Sanking. He should be up here. He could be S tier if he wasn't a T5 unit. You expect more from a, a T5 unit. Uh, insects having having to rely on basically completion at level 8 and uh, well, level 8. Level 8 and 9 and 10. If you pull a Sanking is too much. Makes the whole alliance garbage. Sanking's in the wrong spot. 
Uh, you know, Abaddon being absolutely fantastic as well. Good night. Could even have been in the A tier, maybe even on the edge there. But, uh, you know, something's holding back. Low DPS, uh, kind of a lackluster uh, three-star ability. Still a relatively expensive unit. Pudge, fantastic. You know, Pudge is great. Straight up meat shield. Excellent work. Uh, you know, good alliance bonuses as well in, uh, in Warrior Heartless. Perfect combination. I love it. Uh, Nyx Assassin. Uh, the reason why Nyx is up here is uh, he does a great job of tanking for assassins early on. Spike Carapace is amazing. Much like Paralyzing Cask, it can have a detrimental impact on the board. Those stuns are very legit. Any unit attacking, it basically gets stunned. It has almost a limitless impact. Uh, so Nyx Assassin, although he doesn't have the greatest DPS and is a tier 1 unit, you find yourself using him even in the late game just for Spike Carapace. Slark! Slark should be higher! Here's the thing. Slark's one of those interesting cases that if you have him two stars with a Mask of Madness, he's up here. He's S tier. But you can't, you can't rely on a unit like that. A tier 4 unit running assassins who are already very tricky to pull off. And the only way you can really take advantage of Slark is if he's two stars with a Mask of Madness. Even a Mask of Madness on a one star Slark is garbage. He has to be two star to really have a uh, legitimate impact on the board. So Slark is one of those those units where, yeah, he's B tier, but if you have him in the right conditions, two star with mask, he's S. 100%. Maiden, I often surprise myself with how well Crystal Maiden plays in the early game. Frostbite being an absolutely fantastic skill. Um, Frostbite's often uh, underutilized in most builds. At three stars, the cooldown reduction is key. Very good unit. Uh, Viper, excellent dragon. Uh, Nether Toxin being fantastic as well. Corrosive Skin doing a lot of work. Can even use him as a tank. Very versatile unit. Bristleback, straight up carry for the Brawnies right now. Get him with three stars. Let him absolutely destroy everything. Tons of health. Um, just a fantastic unit overall. Quill Spray being one of the best abilities in the game in my opinion. Wind Ranger with the new three star ability. Wind Ranger is fantastic. You can even mask a Madness Wind, uh, Wind Ranger at two stars and let her do some work with, uh, you know, with, uh, with Hunters. Uh, she's just overall a good unit. Power Shot. Uh, pretty good ability, uh, almost like a mini Keeper of the Light uh, Illuminate, but overall, great unit. Troll Warlord, you'd, you'd expect more from a T5 unit. Again, very similar to the Slark in the way that you need like a Moonshard or a Mask of Madness to really get full effect of him. Being a Tier 5 unit, you expect more impact. He is a good unit, but at Tier 5, you expect and hope for more. Dazzle, overall, just a damn good unit. Trolls kind of boying each other up a little bit. Without that Troll being, uh, bonus being what it, uh, what it is, maybe Dazzle falls to... Uh, tier C but overall trolls are great right now Enigma can single-handedly counter uh, can counter brawnies and uh, you know very high HP compositions but Enigma himself having voids is good primordials not so good so uh, he is a tier 3 so you can kind of shape out primordials sell them off and move into voids later so Enigma has a lot of use Lich, Lich again suffers from being a tier 5 unit very expensive uh, hard to get late game uh, is a great addition into mage builds for, uh, um, Sorry, Frost, uh, Chain Frost is absolutely fantastic and uh, does a lot of work, but still you'd hope for a little more. Still a good unit, worth running. Morphling, good unit tier th uh, at three stars, a fantastic ability. However, hard to get him there. Three, uh, you know, tier three, still hard to get to uh, tier three, three stars. And overall, Morphling is a good unit, waveform doing lots of damage. Uh, Earth Spirit, a good unit as well. Uh, good stun. Uh, sorry, good silence. Stuns at tier three at uh, three stars. Overall, good. He synergizes well with uh, someone like the, uh, the the storm spirit. Also, the the silence effect on the delta slams very useful, and that will put some above the void there. Chaos knight. Chaos knight's a good hero. Great with someone like legion commander and knights and demons. The problem is, is that. Uh, his three-star ability is lackluster, it really is. Uh, you'd hope for a little bit more from Chaos Knight. Um, but overall, I think they missed the mark with this three-star ability. Uh, you know, maintaining a night bonus wherever you are is fine. It's good, you, you take it. But there's so much more potential in Chaos Knight. Those of you that play Dota 2, you would know. Chaos Knight can be an absolutely crazy carry. That's three, that three-star ability is lacking. And then you have a Void Spirit. Void Spirit does a lot of work. Uh, dissimulation with the uh, the armor reduction. Uh, overall, very good unit. Uh, much appreciated. Void and Spirit's a very good combination, and it activates uh, a lot of opportunities to run those two together. Then you have Beastmaster. Good Hunter. Good Brawny. Wild Axes does a lot of damage. It's a good unit. Omni Knight. He's tanky. Tanky and healy. Pretty good. Lycan. Pretty good, but only in set builds, right? Only in the... Uh, you know, the Savage Summoner builds, you're not going to see him anywhere else. But overall, when he's in those builds, again, he's probably held back by the fact that, uh, you know, Savages aren't quite where they should be. He's probably held back by that. And then you have the Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi is overall very good. Three stars with the multi-cast, uh, multi very good. He's also a good tank for mages. He's overall a good unit. And all those, uh, and just like all the other units in uh, B tier, Queen of Pain is a good unit. There's some issues with her. You can't run multiple of her, for instance. She's very squishy. At three stars, she gets the uh, evasiveness, which is excellent. She, she's capable of being an incredible DPS machine. But overall, just a, she's a good unit. Now, 
C tier. This is where things get interesting because these types of units can have a really good impact on the board, but they still, they lack in some ways. Like Slardar, he's good. He's good. Corrosive Haze does a good job, especially when you're running like armor, you know, when you're running, uh, you know, Vigilance or you're running a Venomancer or uh, Eno or stuff like that. But overall, like, he doesn't have the health pool he needs. Three star, give him the uh, the Bash to the Deep is good, but he's just not where he, he's not where he should be. He's just not where he should be. Right? You kind of hope for more for Slardar. Uh, Razor, he's a good unit. Tier 1, you could 3-star him. Good 3-star effect. Um, but uh, overall, he just loses strength at that late game if you're not running um, if you're not running 6 mages. Uh, Primordials, they just don't they do not do it for you. They don't have any lasting stay, staying power, and it affects Razor in a very negative way. So Razor, unfortunately, falls off a bit. Drow Ranger, great alliances, right? But... You know what? At three stars, if the aura range was a little, a little wider, she could be A tier, S tier. But uh, having have it locked in at what uh, you know, really positioning based hero, the disadvantage of Drow Ranger is it really locks you into formation, which can make you vulnerable to certain uh, types of uh, you know, like enigmas and stuff like that. So uh, Drow Ranger does have some drawbacks, but uh, overall, excellent alliances, a core staple of hunters, uh, hunters, heartless, and vigilance. Um, she's a good unit. Very weak, but uh, you know, can help with quite a bit of DPS. Has a relatively slow attack rate though compared to other hunters, but the aura makes up for it, right? So she, she, again, she has some drawbacks individually, but when you have Heartless Hunter, she could be uh, you know an MVP. Ember Spirit, Ember Spirit's tricky because when you have spirits, he's not good enough with a blink dagger. He just he just dies too quickly unless he's two stars. As an assassin, he's fine. He does he does good damage as an assassin with something like a uh, you know Battle Fury, um, you know. Uh, but overall, mm, mm, Ember Spirit, you know, the burning effect on the Deltas is okay against high damage, uh, high HP comps. But not nearly as good as the Silence, right? So, he falls down a little bit. Juggernaut's good. Juggernaut's good, just not great. High attack rate, good HP. He's expensive at Tier 3, though. He's expensive. Like, when you compare him to Bristleback, you'd rather take Bristleback, right? You'd rather have Bristleback. He has a lot of DPS potential, but... Uh, Bristleback's a better brawny, straight up, and he's a tier, uh, he's a tier less expensive, so win-win, right? Uh, Nature's Prophet and Magnus come together here. They activate uh, uh, Druids. Druids are probably amongst the most balanced. They both have good three-star effects. They do a good job together, and uh, overall, they're just they're just good units. Legion Commander could is okay. Legion Commander in like Demon Trolls is up here. Legion Commander as an overall hero down here. She can be one of those heroes where you have Legion Commander, you pull her around 9, you're like, I can't, it's too late. It's too late, she's useless, I can't even add her. And you just can't run her for the whole game. She's like, you get her early, you get her snowballing early, or you just get rid of her, she's useless. So, she's probably the most polarized of all the heroes in the game, either one of your best carries or one of your most useless pieces of garbage. And that's what puts her at C, because she's extremely unreliable. Legion Commander builds used to be very reliable when she, when she gained the Bloodbound effect, now she doesn't. So now it's very difficult to have a very consistent ride for Legion Commander, and that dropped her way down. Legion Commander used to be up here when Bloodbound was activating for her, but now, huge nerf. Arc Warden, yes, of course, the clones with the items, but that's only at three stars. So yes, you have to investigate Arc Warden at three stars. He has horrible alliances. Horrible alliances. Why? He doesn't even get the Primordial bonus. He doesn't get the Primordial bonus. Of course, the Summoner bonus counts, sure, but... You're not getting, like, you don't care about the clones for a damage perspective. That's why you put Maelstrom on him. You put Maelstrom on him, and he, the attacks just trigger Maelstrom, and that's where your damage comes from. The individual auto attack, like, is negligible. It's negligible. And with the mana generation nerf, then, like, I mean, Arc Warden. <sighs> Again, another unit that could be up here, but got hit with that nerf hammer a little too early. Bad Rider, the first, the first troll I take out. He is the weakest of the trolls. Sticky Knee Palm is good, but it's not great. He's fine. You get him with three stars, he adds the burn effect. It's like a slow, it's a soft counter to some high HP comps, but realistically, like he doesn't like he doesn't do what Witch Doctor does, or he doesn't do what Dazzle or even Shower Shaman does. Like he he's the weakest of the trolls. If you get a chance to patrol it in, it's it's usually Bow Rider that comes out. Venomancer can be good. Get a Desolator on Venomancer or uh you know, get him with three stars, give uh give a void stone to him, let him go crazy and uh, just stack poison. Not bad. The problem is is he tends to attack the same damn unit and poison being what it is, poison's capping at five stacks, holds him down. Let's say poison capped at ten stacks and did way more damage over time. You'd see Venomancer jump right up, and you'd see, you know, uh, Viper do the same. 
and Eno, of course, but because it only stacks at five, they tend to attack the same target. It's just, it's wasted. The way the AI uses Venomancer is a waste, and that's what holds him down. Faceless, he's good. He's good. He activates Void, which is good. He's an assassin. He doesn't really do all that much damage. By the time you get him into the game, if you're running assassins, you barely got any health because the mid and early game is so weak. You almost never, you never get him to two stars, and... Um, Again, he's he's a tricky one. He activates for you. He kind of locks down your own team in the Chrono Cube. He's a weird one. He he's he's good because of the alliances he brings to the table, but he has a lot of drawbacks too. And for a tier five unit, you expect more. He's yeah, you expect more from a tier five unit. There's a worse tier five unit though, unfortunately. And Weaver's good. I like Weaver. He's an early game insect, but he's held back by the fact that insects are garbage. Insects having to rely on the Sand King for. Uh, at uh, level eight and uh, tier five, it's it's brutal. So, at best, you know you run you run insects for a little bit early game, and then you get rid of Weaver. If you're running uh, hunters, you get rid of Weaver when you get a Medusa or a Marana, right? So, Weaver's disposable. Tusk, it breaks my heart. The Panda Punch himself, Panda Punch is good. Tusk just doesn't scale. Um, Warrior Savage is not a combination that works particularly well. Um, and at the end of the day, he's a, he's a good enough warrior. He's a better savage. But you, it's very rare you run. If you're running six warriors and you pull a tide hunter, or you know you're taking you're taking Tusk out. Like um, it's unfortunate, but Tusk is probably the one that comes out. Uh, I mean, he does way more damage than Pudge, but Tusk is not what you want. And of course, Tiny, just like Tusk, it's like, hey, who's higher level? Do I have a two star Tusk or a two star Tiny? Is one of them close to three stars and you get rid of them? Tiny is good, weak alliances. But that being said. Tiny's alliances are better in the early game because Primordials kind of hold you in the early game. But late game, I'd rather have Savage over Primordial. So they're both lacking. They're both lacking. The three-star effects are pretty good, though. Uh, D tier, these are weak units. Uh, you know, it, I know you're thinking, Alex, Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon can carry you quite a bit in the early game. Yes, but no. Like, he carries you a little bit. He might get a couple good demonic purges off, but outside of that, like, you get rid of him. Even in demon builds, because you don't need unique demons, like... You get rid of them. You just run multiple, you know, Chaos Knights. You run multiple Shadow Fiends. Like, it, like you just don't use them. If you get them to three stars, of course you keep them. But at two stars, you sell them every time. It, it feels bad. Snapfire, post nerf Snapfire. Mortimer's Kisses used to be like the kiss of death. Now, it's gone. It's just gone. And then you have Io, of course. Io could be good. Io's a bit of a win more hero, right? The uh, the Wisp here. Uh, Io, what he does, he allows you to kind of, you know, kind of push... Push your victory further by resing someone doing additional damage. But if you're behind, man, your whole lineup's dead. Then I was like, oh, I'm going to res someone. And then, like, the team just, their whole team crowds around Io as he reses and then just pounds them all to death. It's just, and Sven, Sven, oh, Sven. If he had more armor or more health or just something, he blows up so fast. By the time he casts God's Strength, he's, he's done. You need a Moon Shard to even make him playable. With that being said, if he has a Moon Shard and he's two stars and he's, you know, one of the last alive, you stack him in the back, he can carry a team. But generally speaking, he's trash. And oh, Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight. There would have been months ago where Dragon Knight would have been the number one hero on a tier list. And he's not. And he's just not. So it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. And finally, we got Broodmother. Broodmother, the worst hero in the game. Oh, Broodmother, you suck. You suck so bad. Horrible alliances. Even with even with, with uh, Warlocks, it feels bad being forced to run her. And she's almost like a stopgap. You never get her to three stars. You're not going to take advantage of that for the insect bonus unless you play knockout. But overall, guys, this is my tier list and my explanations around them. I'm very interested in your opinions as well. Let me know. Again, this is purely subjective. It's one of those things like it's my opinion and my opinion uh, alone. Patches and changes and uh, new metas really shift this stuff. But at the end of the day, this is where my thought process is right now. If you have comments, let me know in the comments below. I'd appreciate to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day.